Hey, good afternoon, folks. Uh, my name's Carl Jones. I'm a retired chemistry teacher, did high school, and uh, I, I'm here to share some videos of hopefully some fun stuff in chemistry because there's more to chemistry than balancing equations, solving problems, and taking notes. So uh, I hope to share a few with you, and, uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy them. Uh, be advised that uh, these are not things that you should attempt at home, that uh, I am a, a, prof a professional chemistry teacher and have, took, and have a chemistry degree, so I know the safety factors involved and follow them. You should not do these on your own. Just enjoy for right now. Okay, what I have in front of me is a, presumably, as I was told by NASA, uh, this is a retrieved bottle from a South Pacific island during the Gemini astronaut program. Apparently, someone has decided this might actually be a genie bottle. And they were a little concerned about testing it, so they decided to sacrifice an old chemistry teacher to test it. And to test it, we uh, I guess we have to pull the cork, and we have to see if we can get the genie to come out. So we'll pull the cork and give it a shot. And temporarily, there isn't anything happening in this genie bottle. What happened to this genie bottle? Not much going on in this genie bottle. Oh, maybe I'm waking her up. Let's see if she woke up. Has awakened. Pardon my English if I messed you up. A very reluctant genie seems to be getting a little bit more interested and come on out of there lady come on come on out and a pretty good genie just took a while if we're lucky, it'll be Barbara Eden. Some of the older folks will know who I'm talking about. Uh, if not, it'll just be the old chemistry teacher who's actually the chemistry genie this time. Well, the first thing I always hear when I ask students about this is, Do it again! Do it again! So, I'm going to walk around, shut off my camera, and set it up to show it to you where you can see what happened inside the genie bottle. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, this time we're set up with a clear bottle so you can see what's going on. This is about 30 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, very strong hydrogen peroxide, not, not what you can buy in the store. And I'm going to put in a little bit of a black powder material here that is manganese dioxide or manganese 4 oxide. And that was tied up in a, little, in a little piece of tissue like that and hung from a string. And when I pull the cork, hopefully the, the little pellet of stuff was going to go down into the hydrogen peroxide in here and it would react. But we're going to see what happens if we just add some where you can see what's going on. Hopefully we'll get us a, a genie out of this one too. The manganese dioxide or manganese 4 oxide is actually what's called a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up or slows down a chemical reaction without being consumed in the chemical reaction. So if we start with some manganese and dioxide, we end up with that. Now the hydrogen peroxide, on the other hand, doesn't do that. The hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen. And in the process, it releases a, a good bit of heat.
and sometimes you have crashes and bangs in the back of your lab too, but that's the way it goes. This one's not going to give us much of a genie, it doesn't look like. Come on. Of course, this one hadn't been trapped in the Erlenmeyer flask for, you know, for hundreds of years, so it's maybe not quite so anxious to come out. And I'm going to show it to you one more time after this with a different catalyst. It's kind of interesting to see it do it with this. This other catalyst that I'm going to use is potassium iodide, and I'll use it in a minute. We'll see if let's see if this one will actually finally decide to go ahead and come out of the bottle. Looks like it's going to. Ooh. Nice little bit of steam, too. Wow. Yeah, same old genie, though. Same old, same old retired chemistry teacher. But he's having fun. So I'll go shut off the recorder for a minute, and we'll set up and watch it again with a different catalyst. Okay, this time we're going to do it again. This time I have the hydrogen peroxide in here again. And this time I'm going to put in some potassium iodide. And when you see this one go, you can see something happening to the potassium iodide. It's a, a, a white crystal and solid, but as it dissolves, it would normally be clear. But as this process starts going on, you can see something happening. quite a bit of color change there. That color change is due to the formation of iodine, I2. Woo! This one's a, this one's a, a bit more zippy than the others were. But you notice when it's through, the iodine is gone. It's gone. And it's uh, a, a transparent liquid. You might be able to see the splatters on the paper I put here to help us see the color change. Those splatters are elemental iodine interacting with the paper. And I do have to say today that I've had a really good time, but I, I have to have to do a little bit here of, a, of closing credits, so I'm going to come shut this off and clean up, and then I'll come back and say a few words about that. Well, I really had fun doing this today. I want to thank, some, thank and remember some folks who uh, inspired me to do uh, many things uh, as I was teaching and uh, helped me put on or put on many of the science shows that we used to do at Newman Smith High School. Uh, first of all, my, my good friend Jim Elliott, uh, my colleague and friend Norm Rahner, uh, colleague and friend Peggy Busby and colleague and friend Koshi Daniel. Uh, all of you, all of you guys were uh, always a, a support and insp inspiration for me because of the things you brought to the table and your knowledge and your en enthusiasm for science. So I'm going to sign off for today and once again I'm telling you don't do these things at your house. You don't know what you're doing.